Hoi Lamar, I am backstage at Sasha Soprano's Drag Queens of Comedy and I have with me comedic and drag legend, Miss Jackie Beats. Are you serious? Where? I love her! Oh, that's me! <laughs> that's so tacky to say that I love myself. But you know what? Don't trust any drag queen who doesn't think she's the shit. Well, first of all, I've never met one who doesn't think she's the shit, even when they're not. That's true. So, tell me, how did you devise your iconic eyes? Just, you know, I stole from the... Oh, thank you so much. It's live. Shit's happening all around you know what? You know what, if you don't want people interrupting the interview with you look gorgeous, then don't interview Jackie B. Oh. <laughs> so back to my iconic, world famous eyes. I just really kind of stole <laughs> from everybody, uh, you know, I've ever seen. And I just, you know, I know that, I just think that like more makeup is better. I mean, I just figured you spend, you know, you spend 90 minutes putting on makeup. Let them fucking see it. So you look down upon girls who go for that real girl thing. That's drag. I'm curious. Well, I don't look down on them. I just, you know, if I wanted to see a real girl, I'd go to the mall. I want to see something <laughs> heightened, you know? Am I making any sense at all? Okay. I'm afraid I'm not because I, I gotta be honest with you. I took some prescription drugs and they weren't mine. I rummaged through a purse backstage and <laughs> I just took them with a glass of wine. Now, you have a very biting sense of humor. I do. I do. She does. So, are there times when you ever are, even have a tinge of thought, like, am I going too far? Oh my god, all the time. Really? I, seriously. Well, first of all, I've written for Joan Rivers of course. and Roseanne Barr, and then Ross Matthews. Ross Matthews is the non-threatening, you know, fun-loving gay boy next door. And occasionally I would write a joke for him and he'd be like, I'm not Joan Rivers. Now, you have not only written for Roseanne, but you've toured with her and yes. you guys are quite good friends. Yes. Tell me more about, we've seen a lot of different sides of Roseanne. Um, is this the public personality we see the person that you identify with and, and now? Well, first of all, if you've read any of her books, she is brilliant. I mean, yes. seriously, the woman is so smart, and I've said this before, she's too smart. Like, for her own good, almost. It's like, you know, you want to get through life. There's so much ugliness in the world, and so much going on, and so much corruption, and... You know, she's from a different era. She's, you know, I think she's sort of a 60s, you know, radical. And so she has that, she's a fighter. Right. But ultimately, she is a mother. She's very maternal and she, yeah, she's very, very maternal. And I would say the same thing about Joan Rivers. They're both Jewish mothers. And that's really the, um, what wins out in the end. I obviously wanted to ask you about Joan because of the fact that I know you guys had a, a long-standing relationship as writers, comedians, and it was such a loss for our community when she passed so unexpectedly. Um, tell me a little bit about what it was like getting to know her. Like I said, I felt a maternal uh, energy from her, and I, I once told her, I said, you know, we all sit around this table pitching jokes because we want to make mommy happy. Because in comedy, nobody laughs. You know, I mean, you've seen it all, done it all, and you're sitting there, and in your head, you know, you go, oh, that's funny. But you don't, like, burst out laughing. I'm very proud to say that I made her laugh quite a few times. And occasionally she'd look at me like, how does your brain work, you know? And I would be sitting at that table, and I would say the most mean-spirited joke about her vagina. And this is, you know, an 80-something-year-old woman who's my boss, and I would be... I love you. And she'd be like, don't worry about it. And that's what I love about Joan, is she would say anything. As long as it got a laugh, she would do it. That is the thing, like, I was going to ask you, because sometimes, like, I can only aspire to the kind of comedy you do. But, like, there are times when people can take something completely, like, out of the context of, like, it was said as a punchline. You know what I mean? Like, I, I've seen, I follow you on Twitter, so I know that there are times when you're like, well, it's a fucking joke, people, you know? Well, first of all, we need to joke about the ugly things. That's the only way we have survived as, the, as a human race. Right. Is to, if you, we only joked about puppies and, uh, you know, 12-inch uh, meatball subs and all the good things in life. <laughs> oh my God, that is so me in a nutshell. <laughs> that should be my dating profile. Puppies and 12-inch meatball subs. And you know what I'm saying. It's right. Like, Listen, Jews have joked about the Holocaust. That's the only way that you can survive true horror. 
I mean, you know, so I've had people boo me. I've had people like, I'm going to unfollow you because I make a joke about, you know, HIV or, listen, I am not a hateful person. I, you know, I don't think that I'm merely shock value. I think it's a, I think that it's all about intelligence. And I hate to sum it up by saying, like, if you don't get the joke, then you're stupid. Everyone's totally, it's their right to be offended, but I just, you can't go through life being offended. As a drag queen and a comedian, is there anything that's off limits? Well, no, I really, you know, I just feel like, uh, okay, I did, in my holiday show this year, I did the song, um, Unforgettable, but I did it as undetectable. And I saw queens completely shutting down. Like seriously, like shaking their heads violently and like looking at like 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 they were getting so upset. And when the song was over, I had to remind them. I said, You guys have been laughing at my Santa raped me song. Right. For years. For how many years now? And now I get something that sort of hits a nerve for you personally. Right. First of all, the song is celebratory. <laughs> I mean, it's all about how things have changed. I mean, granted, it's a little ironic, and you know, <laughs> let's not, you know, let's not, you know, have a parade saying there's a cure quite yet. But anyway, I just, I don't think it, it, if nothing is sacred, then nothing is truly sacred. You're talking to somebody who, first of all. You know, they want to take the N-word out of the Huckleberry Finn book. Right. This is classic literature. And it represents a time frame. Yes! Why not take five minutes and explain to kids this ugly part of our history and how the world used to be and how, thank God, things have changed for most of us. Hopefully. As opposed to whitewashing it. I have no idea. Literally. Literally. <laughs> no, but you know what I'm saying? Why not? Every time that word is in that book, it's an opportunity to have a discussion. But everybody's terrified of gray areas. It's black and white. Again, no pun intended. I don't know a Jew on the planet who would want to go into a book or go back in history and make the Holocaust disappear. Don't ever let them fucking forget. So. And that includes our camera person, Hanukkah Rowinski, who's cackling back there, making our camera bounce around a lot. Well, I want you to know that my body is a temple. I only let Jews in. <laughs> It's like a synagogue. Yeah. But yeah, okay, very good. Synagogue. Ah, uh, synagogue. Cinnabon? What? Oh, now <laughs> I'm hungry. What is it like for you with having worked with the, the biggest names in comedy to be working now? And, and it's one of the... With some of the smallest? <laughs> Just kidding. I love... Uh, listen, I work alone so much that I love group situations like this. I really love the sisterhood of it all, and uh, I love to prove to people that I'm actually very nice, that I may be a bitch on stage, but I'm very nice, and uh, I'm really, really pleased at how fucking hysterical everyone has been to Yeah. Me. Because not everybody, you know, I mean, I've done stand-up, I've done stand-up specials, I've written comedy for stand-up comedians, so it's a very specific thing, and everybody is killing tonight. Lady Bunny's really killing. Because she's screwing guys in the bathroom, so, you know, nice knowing you. What is upcoming for you? What is upcoming for me? <laughs> like, how do you recover from that? I just celebrated 25 years of Jackie Beat. That alone is amazing. Really. It, it really is, because the first time I ever did it was for Halloween in West Hollywood, you know, over 25 years ago, and I never knew that it would be... A career. I, I, I didn't know I would travel all over the world and work with amazing people. So it's weird, strangely bittersweet that my next big project is doing the Golden Girls, which Heclina is so bitter about yeah. because you know she invented it. <gasps> Did she write it? I'm not doing it here in San Francisco. I'm doing it in Los Angeles, my town, with Sherry Vine as Blanche, uh -huh. uh, Drew Drogi, who's best known online as Chloe. Seven uh -huh. and my friend Sam Pancake. Anyway, we're doing the Golden Girls, and it's like after 25 years of drag, it's the one thing that sells out like in five minutes. Uh, I have been part of that production locally for many years, not this coming fall. Who do you play? I play Rose. I got, oh. I got booted. If you're watching it, you're hearing it first. I got booted. Uh oh. But you're I too wanna, smart. I, I want to tell you, your like 
the Arthur is spot on. Thank you. Spot on. Did I'm Heclina gonna... hear that? Can we say that when Heclina's nearby? Listen, B. Arthur is my spirit animal, so I just feel like it's not even, it comes so naturally to me. Everybody, I'm Poi Delmar. Jackie, is it like a legit honor? Thank you. Oh my God. Thank you so Many much. Many years, never got to meet her first time. Ah!